Hello, welcome back folks. I had a student that asked me about this uh, particular data sufficiency problem. Uh, if y does not equal one, is x equal to one? Uh, again, with data sufficiency, if number one alone is sufficient to answer the question, then A is the answer. B is the answer if number two alone is sufficient to answer the question. C is the answer if they are both not sufficient alone, but together they are sufficient. D is the answer if they are sufficient each of them alone. And E is the answer if uh, even together they are not sufficient. Give this one a try on your own by hitting the pause button and then we're gonna do it together. All right, so I hope you tried it on your own. Now we're gonna do it together. So Y does not equal one. So it equals anything other than one. Is X equal to one? Uh, and then let's see if the data is sufficient. The first data is x squared plus y squared equals 1. Now, they're both x squared and y squared has to be positive, right? Uh, because any number squared has to be positive. For example, x squared could be 1 and y squared could be 0. Um, x squared could be 0, y squared could be 1. Um, if, if y could equal 1, but here they can't, so we could scratch that. Uh, but x squared could equal, uh, x could equal half, so x squared could equal a fourth, for example, and y squared could equal three-fourths, right? Because it doesn't have to be integers, because uh, it doesn't say they have to be integers. So anyway, x could equal one and y could equal zero, or x could equal, um, you know, one-half, uh, meaning x squared would be one-fourth, and y would equal, uh, you know, whatever the square root of three-fourths is, Right? So by itself, number one is not sufficient to prove that x equals one. Uh, so uh, we could scratch number one as being sufficient. All right now let's try number two. Number two says y equals one minus x. Now by itself, that wouldn't be sufficient because for example, x could equal one and then y would equal zero. But again, x could equal, uh, you know, whatever, x could equal uh, one half and if that's the case, then y could equal one half, right? Um, so by itself, this is not sufficient because we have infinite possibilities for x. You know, x could be whatever, x could be three fourths and y could then be one fourth, right? So we'd have infinite possibilities. So by itself, number two is also not sufficient. So the next thing we got to do is try them both together. So we have x squared plus y squared equals one, and then we, we have y equals one minus x. We can substitute one minus x right there. So that would then give us x squared plus one minus x squared equals one. What we have to do now is uh, x squared plus, what is, um, let's go over here. One minus x squared equals it's basically right there's a couple of ways there's some formulas to do these quicker but even if you just did the foil one times one is one and then you have minus x because that's first that that's the outer inner is minus x and then plus x squared right so one minus two x plus x squared so we come back over here we get x squared plus one minus two x plus x squared equals one and uh, we do a little math, we get 2x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 1, correct? Uh, and then at that point, the 1s cancel out, so you get 2x squared minus 2x equals 0. We get uh, 2x squared minus 2x equals 0. Uh, a couple ways we could do this, I guess. We could factor out the 2, and we get x squared minus x equals 0. Um, and then divide 2 to each side so we can get rid of the 2. We get x squared minus x equals 0. x squared equals x. So now we know that x squared equals x. So then therefore, x could equal 0 or x could equal 1. Uh, the only problem, uh, so, so we can't narrow down x because x could equal 0 or x could equal 1. However, if we go back way over here, 
if x equals zero, then we'd have y equals one minus zero, and then y would equal one. And that is not allowed. That is a no-no, right? Because it said in the very beginning, y cannot equal one, right? Uh, so the bottom line is we cannot have x equals zero because then y would equal one. So we can, uh, when we narrowed it down where x could equal zero or one, we then realize that we cannot be zero. So that cancels zero out. So the only thing left that x could possibly equal is one. So therefore, <sighs> that's a tough one. But together, they are sufficient to conclude that x equals one. When they are both sufficient together, but neither are sufficient alone, then the answer is C, like Charlie. All right, great stuff. Uh, keep on uh, sending me questions if you have more, and I'll do my best to uh, answer it in one of these videos.